Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. Welcome to Sugar MDs. Today we are going to talk about some diabetes control tips. Now I have outlined here and I'm going to give you some details about how to control your diabetes and that's going to be a very good structure for you all to follow. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so we can provide you more videos and you can be more better educated. Now let's start with um, the seven fundamental concepts that we, especially for type 2 diabetics, but also type 1 diabetics as well, how to really manage your diabetes on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of times people uh, skip the order or they will um, just not even think about it. Um, but diabetes is a very complex disease. Uh, it's not just... Uh, you eat too much disorder, okay? It's not just because you're eating too much sugar disorder. Um, it is a metabolic disorder. It comes with insulin resistance uh, along with relative insulin deficiency. Now, of course, once you become a diabetic, it is easy to give in, uh, become, uh, uh, you know, upset and annoyed or whatever. Uh, and you know, sometimes some, some people do the opposite and they become extremely obsessed about it and so forth. So let's go over actually how we advise people to manage their diabetes. Now, healthy eating, of course, you're going to be like, duh, you know, of course healthy eating. Now, healthy eating does not necessarily mean that you have to quit everything you love. Uh, you just have to understand, number one, what a glycemic index is, uh, what our complex carbs are, what are the portion sizes, and of course, how do they affect your blood sugar? Because not every diabetic is the same. So you have to really understand how carbs are affecting your blood sugars um, and how you can actually make changes in your life without having to reborn uh, to another life uh, and changing your entire diet. Now, some people can do that, but a lot of people is just not able to do that for a variety of reasons. Healthy eating, we have a video about this, diabetic diet, very popular. Uh, after this video, it's gonna be part of the playlist. Make sure you watch that video so you can actually understand the entire concept. I just don't wanna make videos uh, lasting forever because you're not gonna be able to uh, keep your focus. Now, being active, again, be being active is very structured. We have an exercise for diabetics or workouts for diabetics video. There I explain that you have to do 150 minutes for a moderate exercise, uh, at least 60 to 90 minutes if it is vigorous or intense exercise. Uh, but having a structured, uh, regular uh, Arabic as well as uh, uh, resistance training is fundamental in, in managing your diabetes. Now. Of course, there are other things like monitoring, taking medication, problem solving, reducing risks, and healthy coping. Now, what, what do these things mean? Now, everybody understands the healthy eating and being active part. But when it comes to monitoring, people don't know, you know, how to monitor. Now, of course, you know, healthy eating and being active also needs to be understood well because there's a lot of misinformation out there. But monitoring, we have a video about this as well. Uh, how to how many times to check blood sugars very important you need to understand that depending on your individual situation but once you watch the video I think you will have a good understanding so but I'll go over quickly here monitoring can be done in a variety of ways to nowadays is a lot easier right so we have continuous glucose monitoring systems such as Dexcom or Libre uh, we have a lot of good meters people who are who do not want to carry an extra uh, piece of equipment on their body. Uh, they still say, I'll just do uh, a finger stick, but there are a lot of uh, uh, options out there uh, nowadays that you can easily uh, check your blood sugars uh, without a big problem, without, uh, you know, stop doing everything you're doing. Now, taking medication is, is, is a problem because uh, what ends up happening is that diabetic patients end up going on a lot of medications, especially in time, and they get tired of them, or they end up, start, you know, they start forgetting them. Uh, you know, telling somebody to take a medication forever is this difficult. So, 
uh, what we need to do, what we do for our patients and what you need to ask your doctor that you, they need to really solidify, they need to uh, minimize the number of medications. The way to do that is to use a most effective medication that can get the job done, not only today, but also five, 10 years from now, you can still stay on the medication and stay under control. And there are uh, medications out there and uh, I just need to um, tell you that you really have to tell your doctor, okay, just, just don't give me another pill, give me something that will work for a long time. And that's not necessarily insulin, okay? So there are a lot of medications that will not need insulin and that, that will still keep you in track on track and will maintain your blood sugars at a healthy level without needing to take a bunch of pills. Now, problem solving. Now, of course, taking medication, you know, if you don't monitor, you're not gonna know where you are at. So if you're not taking your medication, even if you monitor, your blood sugar is not gonna be under control. So, so these things are not going to fix your diabetes uh, by itself. You have to do all of them, at least partially. So for example, you're eating healthy, right? So you think that eating healthy should do it, but it may not. So, and if your doctor says you need to take a medication because your healthy eating didn't work enough, and if you refuse that, even if you continue to monitor, your blood sugars are not gonna come down just because you're monitoring. Monitoring shows you where you're at. Monitoring shows you if you need a medication. Monitoring shows you if your healthy eating and being active is actually reflecting on your blood sugar control. Of course, taking medication is going to be important if healthy eating and being active is not helping enough. Problem solving. Now, that's where a lot of people fall off the wagon. Here's why. Because they, if they are barely getting things done for their diabetes, the first problem they experience, they just drop the ball. And um, that's why we see patients every three months at least. And sometimes, you know, especially when they're new, I see them way more often because I wanna make sure that they understand. I wanna make sure that they're taking their medication. I wanna make sure that they're monitoring. I wanna make sure that they're on a good uh, routine. Unfortunately, diabetes is a boring disease. You have to be on a routine. Now, problems are when people's routines are disturbed, uh, it could be a travel, it could be some sickness, it could be a relative being sick, it could be that you, you know you have to uh, change your jobs, it could be that you have to move. Um, then the problems start off, I lost my monitor, uh, I, uh, I uh, forgot my medication somewhere else, uh, I cannot exercise because my neighborhood is not good anymore, and excuses are going to always come. Now, these are problems. Now you have to identify the problem, you have to think about a solution, and you have to implement the solution. Actually, if you do these things in your life, you're gonna be successful, not only with diabetes, but in a lot of other things. Reducing risks. Now, reducing risk is, is very important because just because controlling blood sugar does not necessarily mean that your heart disease risk or, or, or some like stroke risk is going down. Sometimes to reduce your risk, you also have to control your blood pressure and your cholesterol. And more strict control of blood pressure and cholesterol is generally required for diabetics. And for that, they still sometimes have to take medications. Again, back to taking medications. Same thing with problems. You know, the same problems with taking medications or monitoring, monitoring your blood pressure doing your blood work for cholesterol. These are all connected. If you do not do these all together, then don't be surprised if the outcome is still not good. So doctors, when they tell you something, they think a lot about it. They know a lot about it, although uh, you may not appreciate it, uh, but they are thinking about you reducing your risk. Okay, they may not have time uh, to tell you how they're doing it and how it works, how things work. Um, but that's why I'm here, right? But reducing risk happens if you control other factors because heart attack, for example, is 
rarely just one single factor, one single risk factor. So typically it's multiple risk factors and we have to risk all, we have to reduce all these risks so that you can stay healthy and have a long life. Again, healthy coping. Now, there's a problem because people will say, why did I get this diabetes? Why did it find me? That's the number one question. People get angry about it. People get angry about a lot of other things and I don't blame them because, you know, having to take medications or medications being expensive or, you know, having to monitor all the time, having to prick their fingers or, you know, having to um, pay co-pays and all that stuff. And, but, but the bottom line is it's your life. And if it happened to you at this point, you have to be able to cope with it because if you give up, then you give up then you're not gonna be able to achieve anything that you want to achieve in life when you're not healthy. So if you're not coping with your diabetes problems, and if you're just ignoring your diabetes, it may sound or feel fine just right now, but down the road, when you are trying to collect your investments that you have done today, you're not gonna be able to enjoy because you're not going to have enough health to be able to enjoy what you have done today. Your hard work, your uh, investments, your life, your kids, your grandkids, you're not gonna be able to see that and that, that's why you have to be able to cope with these problems today. You have to find a way to eat healthy even if you're traveling. You have to find a way of being active even if the gyms are closed, even if it's hot outside. So a lot of times I tell my patients, why can't you get up early in the morning in Florida? It is still not bad at 75 degrees at six o'clock in the morning, but people don't want to do that. But you, you, you can and you should, and it's, it's a problem. So it's an excuse. They have a problem, but they don't want to solve the problem. They just want more medication. But the more medication brings more problems, such as side effects or such as expenses, right? And um, reducing risks, again, if your blood sugars are running high, you're not going to be able to reduce any risk. You're going to go into kidney failure, and the kidney failure will complicate everything else. So as a result, guys, please make sure that you follow this healthy eating, being active, monitoring correctly, taking your medication, problem solving, when there's a problem interfering with your routine, reducing risks, making sure that you're also controlling other risks such as blood pressure and cholesterol, and healthy coping with all of these things that you have to follow. I hope this video was helpful, guys. So make sure you continue to watch the playlist because I'm going to throw in there a lot of other videos that are pertinent to this, like being active, healthy eating, monitoring, etc. So. See you in the next video.